Hi everyone, in this lesson we're going to look at personal loans and simple interest. So one of the things that uh, may occur in your life is you may need to borrow money um, at one point and borrowing money may cost you money. So in this section we're going to um, look at different loans that you can consider and um, that will help you make some informed decisions about your personal finances. So let's go over a couple terms first of all um, before we get started because you're gonna see these terms um, throughout the chapter. Um, so one of those terms is the word credit and that's just um, you know the money a bank or other lender is willing to lend to you. And um, we also refer to that sometimes as the principal of the loan. So you'll see the principal um, a lot of times in problems, and that's dealing with the amount of money that you are um, being lent okay, by some institution. Um, typically, your credit's determined by uh, you know, a bunch of different factors. One of them is your reputation for repaying loans or um, you know, by your earning power, so how much you make. Um, or bring in and uh, from your job, and then also by what you can pledge as security to cover the loan. So that can include, you know, um, uh, a mortgage on a property, um, title to an automobile, savings accounts, stocks, bonds, those things. So security is like collateral. It's anything of value pledged by the borrower that the lender, which is the bank or whatever other institution you're borrowing your money from, they may sell or keep if you don't repay the loan. Um, bankers sometimes will grant loans without security, but usually that requires the signature of one or more other um, people, and we call those people co-signers. Um, and a co-signer basically guarantees that the loan will be repaid. The borrower, um, and if there is a co-signer, has to sign an agreement called the personal note, which is a document that states the terms and conditions of the loan. Um, the most common ways for individuals to borrow money are through installment loans or even using a credit card. One of the first uh, concepts we're gonna look at is simple interest, and that's essential to understanding um, installment buying. Okay, so what is interest? It's the money that the borrower pays for the use of the lender's money. One type of interest is called simple interest, and that's based on the entire amount of the loan for the total period of the loan. And the way we determine simple interest is by taking the principal and we multiply that by the rate. Um, so your rate is your percentage, but it's expressed as a decimal. And then the time is always expressed in the same period as the rate. Okay. Um, ordinary interest is the most common type of simple interest. And to, commute th uh, to compute that, um, we're going to use something called a banker's rule. So the banker's rule just states that um, a month has 30 days and a year has 12 months. So just to make it real easy, um, to figure out how many days would be, be in a year, we would just multiply 30 times 12. So 360 days is what the time is based on when we use the banker's rule uh, when computing ordinary interest. Okay, so for example, um, if let's say we needed to compute ordinary interest using um, an annual, so yearly, simple interest rate, and the time given was five months, we would use time, or T in the uh, formula, as five over 12, because there's five months for the loan, and there's 12 months in a year. Um, if they were to give us the time in days, we would divide the number of days by 360. So if the time given was 73 days, we would just do time equals 73 divided by 360, okay? So um, just note that in this textbook, simple interest means ordinary interest, unless they state otherwise. Okay, so if you need to pause the video to read the example, we're gonna do this together. Then there's a problem underneath that you can try um, on your own. Chase needs to borrow $8,500 to replace the deck at his home. From his credit union, Chase obtains a 30-month loan with an annual simple interest rate of 4.9%. We need to calculate the simple interest he's charged on the loan, and then we need to determine the amount, which means the principal plus the interest, 
Chase will pay the credit union at the end of the 30 months to pay off his loan. Okay, so we're calculating simple interest, and we know the formula is just interest equals principal times rate times time. So going through the problem, they give me a couple um, key pieces of information. So they told us that Chase needs to borrow $8,500 to replace the deck. So when he's borrowing the $8,500, that's our principal. Okay, that's how much the loan will be for. And they also tell us that it's a 30-month loan and an annual simple interest rate of 4.9%. So my rate needs to be converted to a decimal. And remember from section 10.1, to convert 4.9% to a decimal, we drop the percent symbol and divide by 100. Or you could just simply take the decimal point and move it back two places to the left. And any holes that are left, you just fill in a zero. So 4.9% as a decimal would be 0.049. And then my time is 30 months. And time is always, um, when we're dealing with ordinary interest, the time is gonna be expressed in the same period as the rate. So since it's a 30 month loan, um, according to the banker's rule, we know that there's 12 months in a year. So we're gonna divide 30 by 12. And when we do that, we get um, 2.5. So I'm gonna substitute 2.5 in for the time. And then all I need to do is just multiply those numbers together. And when you do that, you get $1,041.25. And for any of the money problems, we're going to make sure we round to the nearest hundredth because we want dollars and cents. So I wouldn't leave that as 1,041.3. Since we're dealing with money, um, it would be $1,041 and then 25 cents. So now we need to, now that we know the interest, we need to determine the amount Chase is going to pay the credit union because they're not just going to lend Chase $8,500. They need to make money off of that loan. So to determine the amount that Chase will pay, um, he's going to pay $8,500, which was your principal, plus the interest on that loan. So the amount, we'll call it A, is equal to interest plus uh, principal or principal plus interest, it doesn't really matter. So here we know our principal is 8,500 and the interest on that loan is $1,041.25. So the amount that Chase will need to pay back in total, if we add those numbers together is 9,541.25. dollars Now would be a good time to pause the video and you can try solving the next problem on your own for practice. Okay, here we're going to um, take a second to read the problem. So feel free to pause the video and then unpause when you're ready. To obtain money to pay some medical bills, John decides to pawn his bicycle. John borrows $300 and after 30 days gets his bicycle back by paying the pawnbroker $355. What annual rate of interest did John pay? So if you'd like to, to learn more about pawn loans, um, you can see the textbook, page 586, for more information on that. All right, so we're looking for the annual rate of interest that John paid. So what I need to do here first is figure out how much um, the amount that John paid to the broker. So I know that um, the amount is just the principal plus the interest, okay? And we know that John ended up paying the broker $355. The principal would be 300, that is what he borrowed, okay? And I'm looking for the interest. So to find the interest, to find I, I'm just gonna subtract 300 from both sides. And we know that the interest is just $55. Now I'm going to use that to determine the rate. So I know that interest equals principal times rate times time. And I know my interest is $55. We know the principal is 300. OK, 
Okay, I don't know the rate, that's my variable. And I know my time here, it says is 30 days. And we know that um, we're going to have uh, 30, since it's in days, we're gonna divide by 360 because the bank banker's rule um, tells us that there's 360 days in a year. And remember, we get that because it's just 30 days times 12 months. Okay, and I can reduce this. So 30 goes into itself once and 360 divided by 30 is 12. So my time is 1 12th. And then I'm gonna put my variable on the end there. So to solve that, I would want to multiply these two things together first, okay? So 30 times 1 12th gives me 25. So I would have 55 equals 25 R. And now to solve for uh, R, I'm gonna divide both sides by 25. And 55 divided by 25 is 2.2, okay? So now that is not the rate, right? Remember the rate is always converted to a decimal when we're um, working it out. So I need to now convert this um, to a percentage. So to change a decimal to a percent, remember in 10.1, we multiplied by 100 and then added the percent symbol. Um, or you could just move the decimal two places to the right and we get 220%. So that is a very high interest rate um, that John paid. Okay, here's another problem for you all to practice. So feel free to pause the video and try working out this problem. And now I'm going to give you um, a minute to read this problem. So again, feel free to pause. And when you're ready, unpause the video and we'll work this out together. In this problem, it says Rodney owns a farm. He needs to purchase new equipment for the farm, but does not have the $1,600 purchase price. The equipment dealership has two payment options. With option number one, Rodney can pay $800 as a down payment and then pay $850 in six months. Okay, so let's highlight that, that's important. In option two, Rodney can pay $400 as a down payment and then pay $1,380 in nine months. Which option has a higher annual simple interest rate? Okay, so we've got two options here. Let's break this down. Okay, option number one. So what do we know? We know that he can pay $800 as a down payment and then pay $850 in six months. So what I need to figure out here is the principal, okay? And in order to find the principal, I know that he needs $1,600 to purchase this equipment, okay? But he only needs to pay $800. So the loan would be for the $800. So the principal is just gonna be 1,600 minus 800, okay? Now to get my interest for that, um, remember it's he would owe $800, okay? Then he's paying 850. So to figure out the um, interest, it's gonna be the 800, plus the 850 that he's going to then pay. But we can subtract the 1600 from that. And we're left with $50. So we know that he paid $50. He will pay with option number one, $50 in interest. Okay, what about the time? It's six months, right? So we know that there's 12 months in a year. And that's just... 0.5. Okay, now I have everything I need except the rate, and that's what I'm trying to find. So interest equals principal times rate times time, and I'm just going to fill in my numbers, okay, my givens. 
And I'm going to put the R at the end. And just like before, we're going to multiply 800 times 0 0.5. And you get 400. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 400. 50 divided by 4, 400 is 0 0.125. That's R. That's your rate. But it's expressed as a decimal. So remember to change that to a percent. I'm just going to slide the decimal two places to the right. So for option one, Rodney would be paying 12.5% for his rate. Okay, let's look at option number two. So with this option, um, he can pay $400 as a down payment and then pay $1,380 in nine months. So I'm going to do the same thing. This time to get the principal, I'm going to take the cost or the purchase price, $1,600 again, and this time I'm subtracting 400 because he's paying that towards the 1600 So that leaves us with $1,200, okay, for your principal. That's what the loan would be for. Okay, what would the interest be? So I'm going to take my $400, which is what the down payment is, plus my 1380 That's what he would be paying um, in uh, nine months. And then I'm going to just subtract 1600 again. And you end up with $180. So that's how much money and interest he would be paying. Okay, the time this time is nine months. So I've got to do nine divided by 12, which is 0.75. And now I have everything I need again to plug into this formula. So this time my interest is 180. Your principal is 1200. Um, the rate is what we're looking for. I'll just put that on the end of the equation. And then it's times 0.75 times R. And then I'm going to multiply 1,200 times 0.75 or, you know, three quarters of 1,200 is 900. So you have 180 equals 900 R. And then we're going to divide both sides by 900. And 180 divided by 900 gives us 0.2 which again, we would need to express as a decimal, uh, sorry, as a percent. So you wanna move the decimal two places to the right and fill in any holes with the zero. So my interest rate there is 20%. So between option one and option two, which one has the higher annual? Um, it would be option two because Rodney would be paying 20% um, interest as opposed to 12.5%. So option number one would be the better um, deal because you want to pay less interest. That's less money you would owe, um, in this case, to the dealership. Let's look at um, a rule. It's called the United States rule. Okay, so typically the principal and interest of a loan are due on a date, um, and that's called the date of maturity. But it's possible to make payments on a loan before the date of maturity, okay? So some people do that so that um, they owe a, a smaller amount. And then also there's less interest on that. Um, a partial payment is a payment that is less than the full amount owed, and it's made prior to the due date. So the Supreme Court um, specified the method by which these payments are credited, um, and it became known as the United States Rule. So if you would like, you can pause the video um, and I'll read this rule to you. It says that the United States rule states that if a partial payment is made on the loan, the interest is computed on the principal from the first day of the loan until the date of the partial payment. The partial payment is used to pay the interest first. Then the rest of the payment is used to reduce the principal. An individual can make as many partial payments as he or, he, as he or she wishes. The procedure is repeated for each payment. The balance due on the date of maturity is determined by computing interest due since the last partial payment and adding this interest to the unpaid principal. So we're going to use the banker's rule to calculate the simple interest when applying the United States rule. Okay, um, right here is a very useful table. And what this tells us is how many days um, each day is numbered for the entire year. 
Okay, so for instance, um, if I was looking at February, okay, so this column here, February 2nd, I'm going to look at this row right here for day two. So go to the column for February, go to the day um, that you're looking for. So February 2nd would be the 33rd day of the year. Okay, if I was looking at March 2nd, it would be the 61st day of the year. Okay, and so on. If there's a leap year, right, so 29 days in, in February instead of 28, you're just going to add one day for the leap year um, if February 29th falls between the two dates under consideration. So, for instance, if I was looking at, um, you know, March uh, 2nd again, and under a typical, like a normal year where February only has 28 days, March 2nd would be the 61st day of the year. But if February um, is a leap year, uh, that means that we would add one to this and March 2nd would then be the 62nd day of the year. All right, so we're gonna refer to that table when we're answering these problems. So the first thing we're gonna do is we wanna determine the due date of a loan made on April 7th for 180 days, okay? So um, the first thing that we want to do is we want to figure out how many days would April 7th be in a year, okay? So what day is it? So April 7th, I'm gonna look at my table. So what I wanna do is go to the uh, column that's the April column, and I wanna to go to day seven. And as you can see there, day seven and April intersect right at that 97. So using that table, and we're assuming it's not a leap year, okay? That would be the 97th day. So let's write that down. Okay, so we're trying to find the due date of the loan made on April 7th for 180 days. So now I'm going to take 180 plus 97, okay, and I'm going to add those together and I would get 277. So that tells me that the due date would then be on the 277th day. So to figure out the 277th day, I need to look at the table and work backwards. So when you find the number 277, it's right here. Okay, and that tells me that it's October and then it's day four. So October 4th is when the due date of the loan would be. Okay, why is that? Because when you refer back to the United States rule, right? If you make a partial payment, um, the balance due on the date of maturity is determined by computing interest due since the last partial payment and adding this interest to the unpaid principal. So we need to add, since they made a payment on the 97th day, we need to add the 180 to that. And now we know that our due date is the 277th day of the year. Um, which will be October 4th. Okay, what if we need to know the number of days from one date to the other? So let's say from March 15th to November 8, 18th, okay? So again, I'm gonna use the table. Let me clear what I know here. Um, so first we're looking at March 15th. So I need to be in the March column and I need to go to day 15. And as you can see there, they intersect right at 74. Okay, again, we're assuming that there's no, it's not a leap year. So let's write that down. March 15th, it's going to be the 74th day of the year. Okay, we need to do the same thing for November 18th. So I'm going to go back to my table. And this time I'm going to highlight the November column. And we're looking for day 18, November 18th. And as you can see there, it's 
the 322nd day of the year. Okay, so how many days are there from March 15th to November 18th? What would I have to do? I would need to subtract to figure out the difference. So 322 minus 74 gives me 248 days. Okay, there's a problem for you all to try um, on your own. And you can um, pause the video to read this problem and we'll work it out together. Okay, and there's actually four parts to this problem. Okay, so we have a mathematics teacher and she plans on attending a national teachers conference. To pay for her airfare on November 1st, 2023, she takes out a 120-day loan for $400 at an interest rate of 12.5%. Then she uses some birthday gift money to make a partial payment of $150 on January 5th, 2024. Then makes a second partial payment of $100 on February 2nd, 2024. Okay, so we need to follow the United States rule here since there's partial payments being made. So one of the important things we need to do is first find when the due date of the loan would be. Okay, so I need to look at my problem. Um, on November 1st, she took out the 120 day loan, right? So I need to figure out what day November 1st would be. Okay, and we're gonna write that down. So going back to my table, I need to go to November. So that column, and it's November 1st, so day one. And you can see that they intersect at 305. So that's the 305th day. Of the year. Okay. So now, just as we did in that previous example, I'm going to take 305 and I'm going to add 120 to that because she took out a 120 day loan. So 305 plus 120 gives us 425. Okay. So what I need to do though is 425 extends into the next year, right? So we know there's only, according to the banker's rule, there's 360 days in a year. So I need to, whenever that happens, subtract, okay? Um, and we know that there's 365 days in a year. So I'm going to subtract 425 minus 365, and that gives us 60, okay? So since we're going into the next year, what would the 60th day of the next year be? So I've got to look at my chart. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this. And the 60th day of the year is normally, if you look at the chart, it's March 1st. But 2024 is actually a leap year. So that means then I need to um, go back one. I'm going to subtract one. And that would take us to February 29th. Okay, so February 29th is actually um, the date that the loan would be due. Okay, so 60th day I'm going to put here is in the notes. It's March 1st, but 2024 is a leap year. So when that happens, you're going to subtract one, right? Really, the 60th day would be the day before it, which would be February 29th. Okay, so that's when the due date of the loan is. So the next thing we need to do is determine the interest and the amount credited to the principal on January 5th. So remember, she made 
um, a partial payment of $150 on January 5th. Okay, so I need to figure out January 5th, that's an easy one. That's the fifth day of the year, right? Don't even need the table for that. And November 1st now, I'm gonna need to go to my table. So November 1st, so go to the November column. And then the first, that would be 305. So that's the 305th day. And we know that from um, part A. Okay, so how many days from January 5th to November 1st when she made that payment? Um, I'm going to subtract like I did before, except I'm subtracting 365 and 305. And then I need to add five days on for that January 5th, the fifth day. So that's giving me that's 65 days. Okay, so I need that now to figure out the interest. Remember the interest is principal times rate times time. And I need to know the time, and that's what this is telling me. It's 65 out of 360, okay? And I know that my interest rate is 12 and a half percent. And as a decimal, that would be 0.125. So my principal here is the amount of money that she took the loan out for, which was $400, okay? We're gonna multiply that by the rate. And then the time, we're gonna leave that as 365 divided by 360. And when you multiply all that, you get $9.03. So that's the interest, okay? But what we need to do is we need to take the amount she paid. She made a partial payment of 150. So according to the United States rule, we now need to subtract that $9.03. And when we do that, we get $140.97. So that's the adjusted principle, okay? Um, sorry, that's not the adjusted principle. That's... Um, the amount of money we're gonna subtract from the loan to get the adjusted principal, okay? So therefore, remember that's what those three dots mean. Um, we're gonna take 400 minus, now it's not the 150, we're subtracting the interest from it. So we're subtracting and we get 140, $140.97 and 400 minus $140.97 is $259.03. Okay, so that's the amount um, that that's the adjusted principal or, or the amount credited um, to the principal on January 5th. Okay, so that's the adjusted principal. Okay. We're basically doing the same thing for part C, um, because remember, she also made um, another partial payment, right? On February 2nd, she made a partial payment of $100. So we're basically going to go through the same process here, okay? Um, we already know that January 5th is the fifth day. February 2nd um, is going to be, let's see if we go to our table. February 2nd is the 33rd day. So if I want to figure out how many days January 5th to February 2nd, it's just going to be 33 minus 5, which we know is 28 days. Okay? And just like before, I'm going to do interest equals principal times rate times time. I have everything I need. Okay, my principal now is going to be, oh, sorry, I'm putting this in the wrong place. Let me copy this and 
get rid of that and then paste it here. Okay, that's better. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is the principal, remember your principal is now this because it's adjusted, right? Um, we took away from the original loan the interest and then we took away the, um, so the loan was for 400 and we're subtracting the $140.97 because that was the partial payment, but we're taking away the interest from it. Okay, so we're gonna use this number now, the adjusted principal, which is $259.03, okay? And I believe the interest rate is still the same. It's 12.5%, so we're gonna use 0.125. And my um, time this time would be 28 days out of 360. So we're just gonna leave that as 28 over 360. And when you multiply all that out, the interest that you're gonna get is 200, or sorry, $2.52. Okay, so what do I need to do? I need to take that away um, from the amount, the partial payment. So remember, she paid $100. I'm gonna subtract the interest. And when I do that, I get $97.48. Okay, so that's credited towards the principal. So let's make a little note. And then what we need to do is get the adjusted principal. So we're going to take $259.03, remember the original adjusted principal, and we're gonna subtract the $97 and 48 cents. And now our new adjusted principal is $161.55. So this is our new adjusted principal. Okay, so how much does she have to pay on the due date, okay, after all that? So if we go back to the problem, the due date is, uh, let's see. Uh, March 1st, right? So we figured that out from letter A. Okay, so the due date is March 1st. And that last time she made the um, partial payment was February 2nd. So I need to figure out how many days it is from February 2nd to March 1st. And remember, it is a leap year, right? So um, we said that it was 60 days to March 1st. And then February 2nd was the 33rd day, but we're gonna add one because it's a leap year. So that comes out to 28 days. Okay, so the interest is equal to the principal times the rate times the time. So what's my new principal? It's my adjusted principal, which is $161.55. My rate is still 12.5%, so we're gonna write that as 0.125. And the time is 28 over 360. And when we do that, the interest that you get when you multiply that out is $1.57. Okay, so all she needs to pay would be the adjusted principal, which is $161.55 plus the interest, $1.57. So it's the amount, we'll call it A, um, would be $161.55 plus $1.57. So the amount that she would owe is $163.12.
Definitely take the time to practice. Also make sure when you're um, typing in the fractions that you're getting the answers I'm getting um, because part of the battle is typing those in. Um, and then here's another problem for you to practice. So you can pause the video and practice. And then the next lesson that we're going to be looking at is um, in 10.3, which is compound interest. Hope you all have a great rest of your day and please reach out if you have any questions.